Hi everyone. Quite a while ago when I started making dissecting pseudoscience, I made um, a video where I included some criteria that I feel that scientific evidence needs to meet. And um, I've been asked questions about that. Uh, people wanted me to clarify these things and, and maybe put it in a video of its own. And I kind of like that idea because I was kind of happy with the way I it, the way I phrased those uh, criteria. Uh, I've, I've had some complaints about them, but, but I think yes, it does deserve a video of its own. This isn't going to be it because, frankly, I feel that it deserves uh, a proper video, not just a, a quick unscripted thing here. Um, and, and the problem with that is that right now I, 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 I'm working on other video projects. Anyway, I will address some of the questions I have uh, been asked. The way I put it was, scientific evidence needs to meet three criteria. They need to be, uh, first of all, uh, but I phrase it like this. Scientific evidence is an observation that, one, is the outcome of a test that could potentially falsify the claim in question. Two, uh, it has to be independently verifiable. Three, it can't also be the evidence, it can't also be evidence of uh, a simpler claim that contradicts the one that I'm trying to prove. Because then Occam's razor would say that the simpler claim is the one that it, that it's actually evidence for. Um, now, the first thing I need to point out is that this is not a definition of evidence. It's my take on how to explain something that is actually very complicated. So don't think for a second that I'm I'm sort of you know citing some uh, authoritative uh, definition or something like that. that. That's that's not what I'm doing. I'm trying to explain something that is very complicated because there is no good definition of what evidence is. I suppose you could say that. Well, I mentioned it uh, in the subject of. Uh, UFOs, evidence that aliens are visiting us, and um, I wanted to present these to show that none of the evidence presented, like, you know, humans couldn't have made the pyramids, you know, and stuff like that, that none of that actually meets all these three, and, you know, watch my video about it, uh, I'm linking to it below, uh, and you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. But it doesn't just apply to claims about aliens visiting us. Of course, it applies to everything. And I say that in, in that video. This, these are standards that, that apply in science. And I think that was a bit clumsy of me to say. Because it doesn't apply to every claim. It, I would say it applies to extraordinary claims. Like aliens are visiting us, not claims like dinner's ready. The first one, the first criterion, that um, it has to be the outcome of a test that could potentially falsify the claim, that has gotten some complaints and a question what the hell does it mean to falsify a claim? And I was asked to dumb it down to the point that I could explain it to a fifth grader. Uh, well, I'm First things first, the complaint. Uh, uh, fair enough. Not everything has to be something that could falsify. Um, but I should probably rephrase it and say that it has to distinguish between the claim being true and the claim not being true. Not necessarily showing that it's false, but um, I mean, take a question regarding existence. Uh, 
God exists. How, how do you prove that false? I mean, no matter how much you look, okay, you don't find him, okay, does that prove he doesn't exist? No, there's no way to falsify the claim, yet there could potentially be evidence indicating that he does exist. So, that's, it, perhaps not everything has to be something that can be falsified, but the, but the point I was trying to make was that the observation has to have the capacity to distinguish between the claim being true or not being true. For example, saying that because I got up this morning, it logically follows that God exists. Well, what if I hadn't gotten up this morning? Would that be evidence that he... I mean, you see, whether God exists or not, it has no effect on whether or not I got up this morning. So it's not usable as evidence. I hope I'm making myself clear. The observation has to be relevant and it has to distinguish between the claim being true or not. And preferably it should be able to falsify it, meaning prove that it is false. Uh, the claim all swans are white is falsified by the observation of a black swan. If I've seen a black swan, I know that all swans are not white. The claim has been falsified. That's what it means. Okay, uh, the second criterion, um, it has to be uh, verifiable. That means that the test has to be something that can be repeated because otherwise, if, you know, all we have is the word of the person making the claim. Here's how the test turned out. Well, sorry, you can't repeat it. Well, then I'll just have to trust you. And then it's not evidence. It's just an anecdote. And uh, the third, of course, like I said, it's, uh, it can't be evidence of a simpler claim as well. The pyramids. Okay, they could have been built by aliens. That's what they're saying. Okay, but humans could have built them. And that's a simpler explanation. So it doesn't work as evidence that aliens have been visiting us. So that's basically it. I hope uh, this will um, be sufficient uh, for the people who ask the questions. Like I said, I, I really don't have time to make a proper video about this right now because I'm working on other stuff. But, um, well, I hope this was good enough. See ya.